Um, but she said my arms still look good. So I was like, all right, that, that's, all, that's all that matters. <laughs> this is how I know you're a social athlete because you need the smoke. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, you heads need also, the smoke. Me heads also no, they need don't. the smoke. Me heads know it. That's that might be accurate. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Massive Sport Podcast. And this episode is brought to you by Peak Strength. Peak Strength is like having garage strength inside of your pocket. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store. Download that today for seven free days of training. It's like having me, Earl, in your pocket, just writing your program Man. so you can get more swole and not look like a frumpy old, <laughs> Sorry. like a frumpy dad like you. I don't look like a frumpy dad. <laughs> Dude, I've been doing, I was at hot yoga just the other day. This is before I ran four miles. Um, I'm better at yoga when I do it before running versus after running. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, um, <laughs> however... They mentioned um, heat muscle protein synthesis because it's in the hot room. And I was like, I wonder if they watch the pot, like if they're subscribed <laughs> to Garage Strength because Dane says that about the sauna all the yeah, time. Like yeah. it's just, here you go. Heat shock proteins. Yeah. Yep. See, I even said it wrong, but That's whatever. Okay. That's why you're the face. I'm just here like playing the dummy. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, um, you're, it's like a ventriloquist. <laughs> okay. Um. People listening or watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, click that notification yeah, bell. That's right. Five stars. Um, or whatever your favorite podcast app is to listen to. We're going to be uh, talking about triceps. Yeah. And how to, like, get them swollen. I wanted you to push a picture. I'm getting there. I was going to tell them to imagine, like, maybe in your youthful days, if you're a young listener. Yeah. Running down the sideline. Here comes that D-back. And it's just like, you ain't getting at me. Arm goes out. Boom. No bend in the elbow, just straight right to the he helmet. <laughs> yeah, I can and see And they, that. like, flatten, or they, like, jump at you, and it just, like, stops the yeah, momentum. Yeah. All right. That's one. Yep. Or maybe... That's a very good one. <laughs> or maybe you're you're a lumpy old man, like Dane says I am, <laughs> and you're sitting there in the mirror, you got your dad bod all out, and you're like, hey, and you... Go ahead, lock that elbow out, and just you know, turn the arm a little bit, and you're like, "There's that tricep hiding around," <laughs> and you're just like, "Yeah, the work's been paying off." Yeah. Or maybe you don't see it, and you're like, "I want to see yeah, it." You want to see it or feel it, and it's just like, or maybe you're that functional fitness person going to the gym, and you see yourself wanting to do a strict handstand push up, finishing off a ring muscle up once you dive through. Or, you know, just getting a higher score in your open workout. We're going to talk about all of those things. All of those things. Yeah. And we will get to one specific exercise that will literally change your ability from a calisthenics gymnastics perspective with pushing motions and CrossFit if you do that sport. One big exercise. How do I get that tricep? Those of you at home, I'm like flexing my arm up so Dane can see it because Dane can't see his bicep because his tricep's so big. <laughs> I, I wanted to share that my tricep is really, really large. I think one due to the genetics, but two, we used to have this, we, we call it the jailhouse incline bench. And it was, it was like a, a 60 degree incline. And I never knew that like inclines were supposed to be 45 degrees. So growing up, like the first time you know, I ever bench pressed. So it's way higher, right? Yeah, it's steeper by like 15 degrees. So you're almost pressing overhead. Yeah, and, and my dad would, would have us do this with like a close grip. And then over time, you know, it took us like two years till we got a flat bench. All we were doing was incline benching on this jailhouse. And so my brother and I would do at least twice a week, you know, close grip incline or normal incline. And over time, my triceps just got stupid, stupid strong from it, along with the other exercise that we'll re reveal at the end. But I think what I learned is just how important one, the, the relationship between your, your shoulder stability and your tricep and even your lat, uh, how that all inter intertwines, but then also how many different movements 
that are extraordinarily fast that your tricep plays a huge role in protecting your elbow. Uh, you know, think about even like if you're if you're about to fall down and you plant your you're supposed to roll if you're actually athletic. True, true. I was just thinking about uh, Kim. Kim fell off the the bar during a muscle up. Uh, your CrossFit Games athlete. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So she fell off and she actually planted and she's like, well, that's from all those. That's from all that tricep work. Yeah. And like caught herself. She still got a bruise on her hip. But she's like she planted and it and was still flexed when she planted. She had a video of it. Um, yeah, people that don't have strong triceps break their wrist or something. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Not their, but yeah, their wrist or their you're elbow, hurt. They'll, they'll something blow happens. Something out in their elbow. So I think it's like figuring out one where where that weakness is in a press, and then two, um, catering to that with various, you know, with various. When you say weakness in a press, are you talking about like? Do I get stuck midway? Do I get stuck right off the chest? Yeah, Do I get stuck yeah, like benching. in the lockout? Yep. Because so if, if I have somebody benching and I see that like like they're weak right off the chest, it's actually probably going to be a little bit more pecs. Mid range to the finish is going to be more triceps, but I also want to see what they're what their if they elbows, turn out. Yeah, if they're if, rotating out. If the elbow rotates out, what's going on there? It depends if they're one if they're a baseball player, but typically you'll see. If someone's elbows come in, their triceps are going to be pretty strong, and they're actually trying to get to the space where they're where they're really strong. Um, if somebody starts to flare, you're going to typically have really weak triceps, and they're trying to get more to the pecs and the shoulders. Um, now, some baseball players that that could completely throw everything out the window, but that's typically how you can think about it. If your body's putting itself in a position that's more advantageous for that mechanical movement, so based off. Based the, off what you the have. The individual currently. body. Yeah, based off of what the individual has. And I always say if, if the body should be able to to hold like 45 degrees essentially between your shoulder and your, your torso with where your, your elbows are going to Is this like a pressing. symmetry discussion then through Pretty much, the yeah. bench press versus like, hey, if you're flaring out, you're too shoulder dominant. If you're flaring in, you're too tricep dominant. Yeah. And that could inform then your sort of accessory movements yes. on yeah. your – hypertrophy day yeah in your peak strength app exactly exactly and actually you know what sam was incline benching today and you could see sam as like he would come off his chest his elbows were flaring out and what was interesting is that as he got to right around mid-range his elbows came under the bar better and then he was smashing with much greater speed you know in that mid-range to the lockout versus from his from his chest to the mid-range the speed was a little bit slower there and i think that just seeing something like that you you immediately know that your triceps are going to respond really well to uh super explosive movements but also typically will respond really well to a, a greater load so if you're saying super explosive movements my brain conjures olympic movements technical coordination movements yeah, yeah. Push press, push press, power jerks, linebacker jerks. Pennsylvania press. PA presses. Yeah. That's from the knees, if anyone doesn't know it. it yeah. I think – I want to argue with you one time. Maybe you should call it adaptive athlete presses. Bring in Ooh, some that, people. Yeah, that'd be good, yeah. I like PA press, but yeah. it, it all – the image – sorry. I always th thought you developed it because you knew an adaptive thrower who threw from a wheelchair, and it was just something that, like it – That would transfer really well. It just made sense to me that way. Anyway, sorry, tangent over. Yeah, <laughs> those are quicker ones. But with the bench press, though, is that why the pad? Like, well, if I do a pad press, yeah, well, my triceps just kick way more. Yeah, they'll get overloaded. And the other crazy part is that you will actually get. Um, I like to have somebody who has like weaker pecs to do a slow eccentric, and then the pad is like it sort of makes up for the lack of strength that their pecs might have. But you're getting the tension through the eccentric. Yeah, 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 exactly. But then the triceps really come into high gear. We're not finish. supposed to talk so much about the bench press. I guess it's just that, okay. w what we're getting to. The The interesting part with the triceps, though, and is and this is something that, going back to, to the jailhouse bench, we used to do... We, we had you know, growing up, okay, we had like four pairs of dumbbells. It was like 40s, 50s. We had, it was like 40s, 50s, 75s, and then 80. It was like real random dumbbells that my dad had. But enough for a young kid to get really strong yeah, with. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> and, and one thing that we always f figured, and we always would do like these, what I call horse extensions now, where I would do like a, 
I would put my hands on a barbell in front of me and get yeah. my head in between my hands and I would it would blow up the outside of my tricep. Like just destroy it. S- super pumped. But one thing I realized Is that like essentially like what are those things called those bands? Is it like TRX or something yes, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a TRX extension. But you would just do it with on a barbell yeah. in your body. Yeah, on the old on the single leg rack that we use downstairs. Okay. Now what was interesting is that we would do a lot of like seated extensions and then we would even try and do like a, like a one arm extension. So we might've actually, now I'm thinking about it, We might've had like a 25 or something because we would do a one arm tricep here and you could do that with the 40. No problem now. Probably. Yeah. Now what I've realized, I'm saying that so confidently Yeah. <laughs> now what I've realized and what we've seen in research is that in the overhead position, your triceps typically, uh, well, they're just taking on a little bit higher level of stress and load. They believe there's a greater load uh, and there's no real supporting. They're like the major muscle at, at play. Okay. So like the shoulders, when you're overhead, the shoulders are really just responsible for an isometric action. Okay. And it's your triceps doing absolutely everything. So they feel all of that load much more so than if you're, if I'm doing a bench press, I'm using my shoulders, my pecs and my triceps. Now they still respond great to benching but in an overhead position is where you're going to get the absolute best gains for your tricep so you're telling me i should do handstand walks to blow up my triceps in a in sort a of plyometric way. yes type and of man i do think that that is a, a type of plyometric yeah. and if i lack the sort of dynamic trunk control to hold my legs up there i could always just kick up to a wall and do shoulder taps yes all right i actually do think that that and i know we've talked about this before yeah but that is that is like type of plyometric that you could do. Yeah, I don't know if we said it on here. We've but we have had the conversation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. I'm finding out all these ways to make my triceps and, larger. And the crazy part is now is like with you know now advancing from my parents' garage, using the bands, using the power elastic. Power elastic. Is now I can go like cross here uh-huh. and go x. You know out making glad like to a, see your arms are getting straighter making like a y and that is something Dane's that, doing the y in the ymca for those of you yeah that you can't listening. see that's where you can see you can really start to feel your triceps get blown up and then use that with another type of press or, or something that has a heavier load is like pre-fatigue or you mean potentiated volume right yeah yeah so you use or muscle innervation and ener- yeah yeah innervation e n Nervation. So if you're potentiating it, you're you're getting it slightly fatigued with the power elastics, rest 30 seconds, then you can do an another isolated tricep exercise that would be like a, a tele extension or something like that uh-huh. or a skull crusher that's a little bit heavier, and then that's going to help you really increase strength and size. Now, you're talking about doing stuff overhead how the tricep feels it's overloaded yeah so like 30 pounds the tricep like no it's 50 even if it's 30 type of thing like hypothetically um tell extension you tend to do laying flat on a bench right yep is there would there be a benefit then doing it on an incline bench where it would become more overhead or couldn't you do that like well i think the only thing with a brainstorm in here with an with a tele extension though you'd still go past so as soon as as soon as you load the elbows like past basically your face you're it's, over you're in the overhead so yeah. laying flat on your back it doesn't really matter yeah you're still overhead got though. it and then you pull and then as you pull it's like the communication between the lats and the triceps and the shoulders all, all kick in but but yeah I, I would say that overhead eccentric part is still gonna load it up quite a bit that's pretty cool yeah that's really cool i mean it's just like thinking about this like people people will hate on the decline bench this is another one decline bench will blow up your triceps well because you can go so heavy on it yeah it's a shorter range of motion people will despise it they'll say it's this terrible exercise it's so stupid but then the same person who says that the decline bench the decline bench sucks will talk about how dips are like the greatest thing ever but if you look at what a decline bench is it's essentially a dip or a decline bench is essentially a dip with shorter range of motion the dip is still the decline. Yeah. It's the same action. Then they're both really good for triceps. 
but they should both be done, and they we should not be ignoring one over the other. If you supersetted those two together, you would you would, you would die on the decline. <laughs> would it be worth it though, or is fall- it too much? Like, is it too much volume for? That's on the tricep at one specific spot. That's an interesting YouTube video where you would do instead of doing like um, antagonistic work, you would actually protagonist do the, work. Yeah, you're like going heavy on both. You like, could tag team work. What else <laughs> yeah. could we throw out there? And it's just like absolute killer. Like there, there was a French coach named actually named Pierre Wa, not the goalie in the NHL uh, Hall of Fame, but actually uh, he, he coached a couple Olympic champions from Canada and weightlifting, and he used to call it the double. So he would okay. say that somebody who had such a bad snatch, they should snatch twice in the same session. So they would do a snatch, they would do like strength work, then they'd do a snatch again. And he would say how that would help so much because they would just get that extra volume. And to me, this is actually the double uh, strength version would be like hitting hitting like a, a bench press and with like an incline bench or a decline with a dip. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, especially, dude, I used to love decline because I always saw it growing up um, – when we used to go train at body works, like on our off days, we would do declines at the, at the gym up there. And which is, I mean, it's literally like two miles from where we're at right now, but we, we would actually do really high rep decline benches because there was some meathead guy who's like, yeah, this will help your lockout. And like, we did it all the time. Yeah. You listen, <laughs> all the meatheads know what they're talking about. Low key. Like they're yeah. like, this worked for me. It's yeah. Like- this worked for me. It got me to bench four Oh five. This dude was like ripping, like, ultimate orange and had a fedra in it and shit yeah <laughs> like all right i'm listening to him you might as well uh it's almost like the meathead guys like the same dude at the concert like passing you like a cassette tape like check out this <laughs> yeah. band or something like yeah. that yeah you just know they, they're yeah. in it they're in it yeah and it's all good information all right so you mentioned the tell extension or tele extension is how i always end up pronouncing it yeah who spells tell with an extra e at the end right right and I don't know phonetics versus like I reading it for the first time versus hearing William it. William Tell William Tell spells his name with no e at the end. Okay, so I I see what you're saying. And then um, so we do that. That's a good movement, right? Like that one's a solid one. The William it. Tell overture. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's like? Give me a before we reveal like. The big one. What's one if I was like at a global gym on a cable machine? Like, do lean, this. Lean away tricep extension. Lean away tricep. And this how is many how, how many reps should? Okay, you so do? this is this is my favorite to do. Is like I would go. Dane's demonstrating. Yeah. So I would stand, and I would. There's two things I would do. I'd either get the cable that you can move up and down. We got the one in the corner, where I would do like lean away more up top. So you're overhead again. Yeah, and then I would I would I would start to lean further forward so that I'm really going elbows flaring and that's going to get the outside of your tricep and then I would put it all the way to the bottom and do it like this way stand s- kneeling straight up. Okay. But when when you do like a lean away tricep extension, if you if you would go like let's say your hips bend at like almost 90 45 degrees probably and you really just focus on punching out and rotating those elbows out you will get the feeling of the horseshoe and that's when you're going to start to actually like know how to develop it and that's when you when you have the action in there with your mind then you're like oh now when i'm doing dips i can feel that so that's a lean away tricep extension is overhead and it, it it will crush you and i would use dude i would do something like this where i would go on those different positions let's say you do a set of 17 to 30 Rest 30 seconds, do it on another angle, 17 to 30. Rest 30 seconds, 17 to 30, and you'll be cooked. Oh, you can't do another set like that? You can. I mean, I would. No, Dude, you wouldn't. I love you getting swole triceps. Real Look quick side discussion. Look at these. No one can see it. It's a podcast. <laughs> Real quick discussion. Have you found since you started running that you can hit higher st- – reps in a set yeah I, I don't even so so i wanted to talk to you a little bit about this uh off air was about i've been doing a lot more research on energy systems and i think training think tank which we we had talked about them like two or three years ago oh yeah no i think Maybe i know where longer. you're going you're, are you going to talk about the oxygen in and, and th- how you use it i think that they just didn't do a good job explaining it but their information was accurate and so what I'm seeing... Maybe you didn't do a good job listening. That's fair. I t- 
told I thought it was wonderful. Okay, so that that also <laughs> could be accurate. One hundred percent could be accurate. Where I struggled before, or or where I I would struggle with seventeen to thirty reps. Now with my aerobic capacity so high, uh huh, dude, I can crank reps the problem is i just did this on bench today i i put 140 on bench and i only got 12 reps and i was like dude i might only get be able to get 315 for 12 reps like maybe 15 and i used to be able to just crush crush 315 just hammering it yeah but you're also like i'm 40 20, yeah, pounds I'm a lot lighter, lighter I'm like a lot lighter <laughs> yeah so like and the one thing caitlin caitlin i don't know if she was blowing smoke up my ass or not she She meant it she she did say my arms haven't gotten smaller but she's like you you're definitely smaller in up top um but she said my arms still look good so i was like all right that that's all that's all that matters (laughs) if that's what my wife you need this is how i know you're a social athlete (laughs) because you need the smoke yes yeah like yeah that's you need the smoke me heads also no they don't smoke me heads know it that's that might be accurate. Like Sam doesn't walk around and be like as an exuberant athlete. Jake doesn't walk around and someone needs I think to blow Sam's him up. Closer to a Zen though. Oh, do you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then he definitely doesn't need it. Yeah, he's he's, just, he's like a meathead Zen. Yeah. It's exuberant now. Branding. Yeah. Come on, anyway, stay on it. it that's all you. right. You're the one who said it, not me. Whatever, dude. All right, let's go r- reveal. Everyone knows what it is. Okay, so we're gonna go into the miracle grow, and this is where you get that diamond grip. Okay. And I would say, you know, we started to use our pads, the the pads that we sell for the balance leg. pad. Yeah, we started using this the the single leg pad, the balance pad. You can get it target. at Garage Strength Equipment. Yeah, so if you go to GarageStrength.com, click on Equipment, you get that pad, and when you get on the bench, set your hips at about ninety degrees perpendicular to the bench, get a big stretch, and dude, I've had people DMing me say, "Man, the first couple times they felt like their triceps were tearing." Like oh wow! Literally tearing, and I was like, "That's probably a mobility issue with your, where your tricep and your lat are like inserting and where they're sort of hanging together." So be just be patient with that, and that'll work itself out. But that also is going to lead to better thoracic extension overhead because now you're not going to be forward with everything. You're going to be able to get deeper, but you get so deep, you get crazy elbow flexion, and then when you get that crazy elbow flexion here. Then you can come up, and this part here is where you can really overload it. And I've by my, this part here, Dane has it like when you're basically you would pull the di- the dumbbell back over your face and, and like extend. you're extending. Yeah. So what I have my swimmer doing right now um, is coming back, and then when she gets to the top here and she extends, she's got a band attached to the dumbbell, so it's like pulling back. So she's a lot of tension overhead, and that makes her squeeze her abs and her lats. And then slowly bringing it back, bring it back, light up the triceps, light up the triceps, come back up, squeeze those triceps. I cannot imagine needing a band to make Miracle Grows harder. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. <laughs> that it's, it's focusing on the crazy elbow flexion and as much range of motion as you can get. And people will constantly say this. Well, well it's, so, it's, not, it's not different from a pullover. And then it's like, yo, just go try it. Yeah. Just do this. Just go do it the way I just told you to do it. Bend your elbows. Bend your elbow and touch the floor with the head of the dumbbell. And then tell me tomorrow that your triceps aren't sore. Yeah. No one has ever done this exercise and not been torn to shreds. Yes, for certain. And it doesn't matter what weight you use. Because if you go too light, you'll be like, oh, I can do more reps. You'll be torn up. Yeah. If you go heavy, you're going to fail probably. It's yeah. you. I don't want to say it. I've seen... People who have clean and jerked 190 kilos Use like get a, mopped up by, by a like miracle 80, grow. By like an 80. Yeah. It's funny because Rachel, so Rachel has benched 315 for a triple. And today she was using a 90 and she was doing sets of seven. And she actually said, she's like, the problem is she's still going to come in tomorrow and she's been doing these for six years and she's still going to be sore tomorrow. And she's yeah. like, but she's got a really strong lockout. She actually fought hard for a 300 pound uh, jerk overhead, 137, because of the stability it provides in your shoulder. So that's the other thing. Even people who struggle with pull ups, they get, they get stronger lats in that full lengthening here. And then that helps also in the lockout with the bench. Dane, why did you think I led with it's the best movement? Yeah, for, for, for a CrossFit athlete yeah. who wants like, Pressing, fitness, gymnastic movements. Dude, the miracle grow is essentially a muscle. It, like it's, it is. 
It's a muscle up. It will teach you how to pull through yep. and, and how to extend. lock out. Yeah, it's the only thing you need to work is your abs yeah. to dive your head through to get into the dip position. Like right. that's the big one there. Um and handstand push-ups, we're talking about triceps. Like yep. if you're not doing it to a deficit, like you're literally pressing, you right. know, head to lockout, head to lockout. Right, right. No. Nah. It's an incredible movement. Yeah, so I mean, uh, what is I, the heaviest miracle grow you've ever done? I've done the one fifties for like five or six. I've done the one twenty five for yeah. eight. I don't know if I've ever done the one sixty five. I I don't think so. But when I hit that, I wasn't my strongest either. You stop programming them. The the problem I have when you get up to the one sixty fives is that your hips, be, because of how heavy it is. Your hips, like my hips, would almost get pulled over. So then you have to put like dumbbells Told down. Hold your on, feet. Yeah. Or you just need stronger abs. Yeah, but it's also it, it's just over, it's like a seesaw. There's nothing you can do about it. Speaking of ab movements, where you like put something over your head like that. Yeah. Remember when I stumbled on doing a using a GHD like for the sit up. Yeah. And just reaching the plate behind that, your head. Yeah, not changing. Yes. Oh, that That's was horrible. It's horrendous. It's very horrible. It's essentially, and you had the bright idea. I'm sorry, we're off track. To superset it with an ab wheel, yeah, because it's the same motion, just in a different way of hitting the ab. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "You're, I hate you." <laughs> like in a good hate. Like, yeah. like I, I saw it immediately when you did it. I was like, "Oh, it's the same. like it's, mechanically, it's, it's, yeah, it's like it, opposite it, ends." Yeah, dude, that's the whole thing too. Going back, and, and I'll relate this back to all the meatheads. Is that it? Back in the '80s in 90s bodybuilding was all about like points of flexion and so if you look at like the the hold position for for that glute ham what you're talking about would be like around your hip yeah the hold position for the ab wheel is going to be more about around your shoulder and that's where like the abs are going to be connected they're they're connected at those spots but the the tension is at a different spot and that's where i mean going back to like the miracle grow the miracle grow will be like right inside your armpit pretty much. And it leads up to your tricep. And if you compare that, I'm just trying to compare that to like a push down, a push down is going to be more elbow and then back up. But the, the benefit of, of having it closer to your armpit and down is that you can go a little bit heavier than you would on like a, a push down, you know, traditional yeah. push down. Miracle so grow. I, point of I know you've, anyone who's in the garage strength content yeah, has you've, heard you've it before. It. Like, yeah. Yep. You have no idea how proud I am to say that this exercise is inside of the app peak strength because I used to get made fun of in high school for calling it the miracle grow and it doesn't have a W on the end. It is the same exact as like the miracle grow supplement that you give plants um, because we said it was feeding our triceps. So we had miracle grow as like blowing up our triceps. But now my high school friends would be like, like they're literally, some of my buddies are like, dude, this is in your app. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is so amazing. So nice. Yeah. So. You ready for the audience questions? Yeah. Liquidarity. Ooh. I'm Look. assuming that's solidarity. Yeah. It's like liquidarity snake. Okay. If you, uh, no, I'm making that yeah. up. Like Metal Gear Solid, there was liquid snake, solid snake in the early ones. Big boss. Um, how do you train athletes to stop their ankles, knees from caving in when they're in the hole? So ankles and knees. So that would be, I think, uh, I have a whole chart. I think it's, I think it's E version in. But usually, usually that's a, an issue where somebody might be flat-footed. So if somebody's flat-footed, um, and, and al it almost always is where the ankles roll in and the knees follow. Um, <clears throat> again, I like to think about the knees are slaves to the hips or to the ankles. Uh, so whatever your hips are doing or whatever your knees or whatever your hips are doing or whatever your ankles are doing, the knees will follow. So I don't, I'm not anti, uh, inserts for your, for your foot for like soles, but I do know a lot of flat footed athletes that do benefit from just a little bit of an insert for their soul. Um, but then I would also focus on when they're doing PVC pipe walk, uh, I would have them sort of crawl with their feet like this to try and create that arch between their big toe and their heel. That can help as well. Um, and then squatting with a band can help, but I think it's better to actually squat with a like a medicine ball to help them think about driving those knees out. Um, but I think the main issue is more so around the ankle than it is around the knee. So two things I heard there, tactile with the band yep. and the 
the ball and yep. then here's a I don't want to say it here's a cyborg help yeah, with yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the yep. instep like yeah. hey it's just anatomy yeah and that can help you and then the PVC the pipe as a accessory movement yeah. from there yeah all right um reddit hey join our discord and reddit every now and then i log on to discord and we'll talk with people too i actually had a nice conversation this weekend were you signing autographs and reddit or no discord? i don't do that i just i talk to people directly i i like the people who boldly request me as a friend because i accept it i'm just like all right because <laughs> low-key secret i am kind of like not on social media outside of to study social media yeah yeah like i'll learn from it but i'm not there to like participate yeah that much it's more like let me see what's going on and figure it out right right. think about it do i i wouldn't know jason's talking to me right now oh Oh yeah, <laughs> three-time co-author, world champ. I need like I, I need like that. three belts or something Yo, silly. That'd be sick. We still need our hyper trophy. Like we still need <laughs> yeah, that here. We should, yeah. It's coming. It, it one day will show up. Um, this is Dipper with two R's. Eleven disclaimer: Not a young athlete. I see myself as an older, fatter, weaker, balder, and less athletic version of Dane. It's almost like Bill Dotree to Hank Hill. (laughs) (laughs) Therefore, I'm into finding high-value workouts that can increase athleticism but decrease injury mileage. I've been watching a bit of Dan John University stuff. The guy loves kettlebells and seems to essentially express the what the heck effect. A, Dan John University. A bad paraphrase would be when I use kettlebells, everything seems to improve. I've personally never given them a fair try, but I'm wondering if the garage strength team has an opinion on their regular use and implementation. I, I don't have I don't have a, an issue with their regular use. Um I would actually watch someone like every goddamn Dre on Instagram. He has a lot of cool uh, kettlebell exercises. Um, we use them. We don't use them probably as much as we could. I think we could definitely use them more uh, than we than we have in our in our actual training. I think I would probably put them on a on like an impulse or a hypertrophic day. Um, I think as far as you know, overarching. You know, there's some people who will be like the absolute kettlebell people um, and they go all in. And maybe that's why I've sort of avoided it to a point. Uh, but I do think that that I think that there's times in a year that you could just go like all in on kettlebells for like two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Almost like a break from normal resistance based training. Um, and I think you can do a lot of interesting reflexive work with kettlebells as well. Um, I would also just recommend still doing some type of for this individual um it still comes back to time under tension and and that yeah. mechanical load and that, and then doing some type of athletic movement to improve your athletic fitness as someone who regularly uses kettlebells i use them primarily for my meta, my cardio yeah yeah they're like get, i get your love heart rate it from, through, to get yeah. my heart rate up and i i own like different weights so I will, one of the things I like to do, and this is just personal me, this isn't Dane or anything, I will like clean and jerk with the, the lightest one. I'll press, I won't jerk it. So like it's a strict press. Mm-hmm. With each arm, I will walk essentially like 20 feet and back. I'll get a heavier kettlebell and I'll snatch it with each arm. Walk again, I'll do American kettlebell swings overhead with an even heavier kettlebell. Walk and get like my heaviest kettlebell and do like just Russian swings. Yeah, And I'm, Right now, because it's cold, I've been in my basement. I can't go overhead, so I've just been doing Russian swings. Started doing, like, single-arm swings. Yeah. My grip gets fried. My lats will feel it. My back and hamstrings, like, if I will light up, but my heart will jump. Right. Especially when I do an overhead movement, like a snatch. And little thing I found, too, when I go overhead with the snatch, my musculature in my arm will pop more. Okay. Just from, like, that isometric tension. Um, to get strong, I don't buy it at all. And this is just personal, but if you want a quick, easy, you feel like you did something. That's yeah. That's probably the good way to put it. It's really like, it's solid. Right. And I will also anecdotally say, if you want to blow up your deadlift, phenomenal. I think accessory movement. Yeah. I think you go with the swings. You can definitely help blow up. I actually blow up your deadlift i actually have a video 
and it might be like garage times one or two. And it might even be the football training one, like the first one we did. And I was, I used to swing dumbbells and I was swinging like the 110 dumbbell and I would do one arm at a time. Yeah. And I always thought that would light up my hamstrings and lower back. And I like it from a grip standpoint too. Yeah. yeah. When you do the one hand. Yeah. So like, if you want to get creative, like put a garage grip on it. Yeah. You know, so it's that, huskier. Yeah. <laughs> huskier. Yeah. <laughs> and two, if you like think about just the movement, it's almost like you're jumping too. Yeah, exactly like that. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hip hit. You'll also see people do it really poorly and like throw it to their quads too much. And it's like, you're missing the point. Don't yeah. squat. Yeah. Sorry. I got a little long winded. Is there any other questions? There? No, nah, that's all of it, dude. I wanted to say this. So if, if you need help with that, with your triceps, do like five sets of seven clap pushups immediately after every seven set, every seven reps of clap pushups hit 12 to 17 reps of miracle grow. You could do that for 20 straight minutes and your triceps are going to be fried. Until next time, guys. Peace. Later.